The Biden administration is the orchestrator of all of this evil. It's like Heath Ledger's Joker is in charge in creating chaos, creating anarchy, taking everything that is good and perverting it. You said just a little bit ago that the, the Democrat party is demonic. The devil lives in these places. All right, I want to I want to jump into this. Um, we are now learning, and I don't know at the time of this taping. We're, we this will probably be a few days out before this airs. But this is this is um, mind blowing and earth shattering. Uh, uh, DailyMail.uk has now released the information. We're finding out that the Biden administration has flown, has flown, put on an airplane and flown three hundred twenty thousand unvetted illegal aliens into the interior of the United States to 43 different cities. Border Patrol cannot tell us which cities those are, but have run a program whereby they've flown them into the country over a course of 12 months in 2023. So, uh, you know, those of you out there who think that it's wonderful that all of these new neighbors are coming into the country, you're probably the same folks that want to fight with people online because they have a differing opinion, or somebody that, uh, you know, you can't get along with Uncle Charlie who wears his red hat, spouts his conspiracy theories, and has a little, you know, pie in his beard on Thanksgiving Day. You, you know, you're fighting with family, and you think you're going to get along with Miguel who came up here from Argentina or Venezuela who doesn't have your same worldview or speak your language. Good luck with that, folks. They're here. We know they're here. It's a matter of time before things get a little bit uh, wiry in the United States. Now, thanks to technology, joining me, my very dear friend, uh, Larry Alex Taunton. And before I let him go, because I'm going to let him talk and I'm going to shut up, uh, there's few people in this world that I would say uh, I truly entrust my my the discipleship of my mind to. Larry's one of those guys. He will help you think more clearly and help you uh, uh, narrow down your worldview to the point of being able to not only understand it, but be able to discuss it with others and, and to share it with others because he's just got that type of mind and the ability to communicate. So you need to tune into his podcast, Ideas Have Consequences with Larry Alex Taunton, Ideas Have Consequences. Um, I don't only listen to it when it comes out. I go back and re-listen to the programs. That's how important it is to me. I read everything that he writes. He's a prolific author. And he's joining us right now from Cartagena, Colombia. Larry, welcome to the program. How are you, my brother? Doing well. How about you, buddy? I'm doing good, man. I'm sitting up here in air conditioning. It looks like, I don't know, you got a beautiful scenic view out there. Yeah, this is... Uh, you're down there like... Yeah, this. I'm in my hotel room, and this is the, uh, the city of... Uh, uh, Cartagena, uh, rather Cartagena, Colombia, right behind me. It's funny to see yeah. you wearing a hoodie because down here it's it's about a hundred degrees. Well, it's warm here too. I'm just fat and I'm covering it up. Uh, here, here's Larry, Larry. How how old are you? I am fifty six. You're fifty six years old, and you still jump on an airplane and go all over the world. You know, you wrote a book called Around the World in More Than Eighty Days. Um, you were just in. You were just in Davos uh, for the World Economic Forum. You went from there to Egypt, from there to Rome. You were home, what, a week or two, and now you're in Colombia. I want, I want to turn this over to you for a second. I want you to walk me through the process of this trip. We'll talk about the old trips in, in a minute, but I want you to walk me through this trip. Why are you in Colombia? What are you seeing in Colombia? And why does it matter to any of us? Walk us through that. What's going on? Well, um, it's, that's a great question, Chad. You know, for the last several years, um, I have, I kind of rebuilt Fixed Point Foundation, the organization that I founded in direct that we are celebrating our 20th anniversary this year. And I rebuilt it in such a way that, you know, I kind of uh, decided to forgo the big staff and the big office and to redirect my attention on travel for this reason, because Part of the uh, a real problem I think we're seeing in, in, in the U.S. is a disconnect among not the elites, but the elitists, as I call them. Mm -hmm. There's an utter disconnect with the way the real world actually is. And uh, rather than just pontificating, you know, from my home or an office in Atlanta or D.C. and New York, I wanted to really be in touch with what is actually happening in the world. And while some of these places, like as you mentioned, you know, Egypt and 
Italy and the UK and Switzerland and Colombia, and from here I'll go to Panama and then from Panama to Mexico, they might seem unrelated. And in some ways they kind of are. I mean, that is to say I'm visiting, we have a little project here that we, uh, we do some work with. And in Egypt, I was meeting with persecuted Christians, but there is a, a kind of a, uh, a connecting thread in all of those. And the connecting thread is globalism. Um, and by that, I mean like the World Economic Forum type of globalism, where how are we seeing their policies playing out all over the world, not just from the United States, but all over the world. And so some of the things that, that you start seeing when you, you know, you, you travel as much as I do, and I've been all over this continent, just probably my 10th time in Colombia in just the last, say, three or four years. I've been in uh, you know Argentina and Brazil multiple times, and Panama, Costa Rica, um, Peru, Chile, some other places. And what you begin seeing is some of the same patterns over and over again. For instance, um, uh, uh, nefarious elections. You know you hardly hear anything about this in the United States, but you know many Americans doubt that the. I mean, the majority of Americans, according to polls don't believe Joe Biden was actually elected. Well, Brazilians don't believe that their current Marxist president was lawfully elected. Colombians don't believe their current Marxist president was lawfully elected. Peruvians don't believe their current Marxist president was lawfully elected. Honduras, Chile, all Marxists, all globalists. Um, you know, So you start seeing the same patterns, and you start seeing the same patterns also with the wide open border policy. So what we're seeing is, you know, what, what you see in microcosm in the United States, when you travel as much as I do, you start seeing a much bigger picture and the same kind of complaints that it's a global war between um, uh, globalists, elitists, and populists. Mm. You said something to you said something the other day on a recording. Uh, I think it was an episode of your show, but I saw it on your Instagram. You said that you can tell when a candidate. You said when a candidate stops caring about the people they represent, or a politician stops caring about the people they represent, they either are getting ready to quit or retire, or they know the fix is in. Yeah. Okay. That's that struck me as is wildly profound because it's so accurate and over the target. And what you just said is interesting as well when you talk about all of these Marxist, quote, elected leaders um, that are installed in these different countries. And every one of the people in the populace, or by and large the people think that they, they were installed, they weren't elected. Um, in essence, when you, when you look at the influence of, uh, for lack of, lack of better terms, everybody knows George Soros or a Klaus Schwab at the World Economic Forum. I mean, is this is this the global agenda to just place like-minded autocrat, dictator type, fascist, Marxist, all the labels, leaders in these countries, and then it's just a one-world popular or a one-world government, a, a globalist agenda? Well, I mean, is that what you're saying? Uh, in part, um, to go back to um, the Instagram post that you're um, you're referring to. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, we we were you and I grew up in a world where, you know, politicians you know, they might be lying, but they were at least fairly sensitive to the polls. They were sensitive to mm. what people actually thought about them. But now we are seeing a um, a new animal, politically speaking, who just doesn't care. They they don't care what the mm. American people think. Indeed, they're quite okay with, um, you know, making them enemies, uh, with um, attacking them, with completely ignoring whatever their concerns are. And that tells you that they're deeply, deeply corrupt, that they're individuals. I mean, just take, you know, on an extreme case, you know, a gay, a, a, a gay, he's probably that, he's certainly a pedophile, uh, of Joe <laughs> Biden or, you know, Justin Trudeau, who I think probably is gay. Um, he's gay. These are, these, <laughs> these are individuals yes. who care nothing. And that's because, I mean, think about it. Joe Biden 
was in his basement and didn't even campaign in 2020. When you're not doing right. that, that means you know that the fix is in. You know that you're going to win, not because you actually win the vote or the electoral vote, but because you know that behind the scenes, you have operatives who are controlling the outcome of the election. So that's one of the things that you see happening. But I also think that that what we're seeing is, you know, to the second part of your question, is a globalist agenda to annihilate borders and not to, you know, in past American policy, one could say that it was misguided, um, but there was at least um, some element of good intention that the United States sought in some way to elevate other countries to the level of the United States. That was not the Obama plan. And Obama, I think, is right. puppeteer behind all of this. It's the opposite. It is to de-elevate the United States. It is to third world the United States. That's why they're sending all this money um, to Ukraine. That's why they're deliberately tanking the economy. It's uh, a COVID is behind that, and it's why they're pouring money also, I think, coming from Ukraine. That's my theory, by the way. I think this money that's being laundered in Ukraine is funding all of these flights into the U.S., is funding what I'm seeing here in South America. Stuff I saw yesterday is absolute insanity. But, um, you know, these are people that they're happy to assist to come into the United States to invest in them financially, taking your money, my money, um, and handing it over um, to illegals. They're doing that to third world the United States and to put the Democrat Party into power forever, forever. That's the goal. Hey, guys, the information I'm about to share with you could radically change your life. I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you because right now there's a silent epidemic that is affecting over 100 million Americans. You know what it is? It is a fatty liver. You want to know why you feel sluggish, why you can't sleep, why you gain weight? Ah, you feel terrible. It's because you're throwing everything at your liver, cholesterol, toxins, um, alcohol, cigarettes, you name it. It's crazy. Your liver does so many things to help you every single day, so many different functions. You ought to be helping your liver. So I want to encourage you, if you want to look better, you want to feel better, you want to sleep better, fix your liver, okay? And you can do that with Liver Health Formula. It's an all-natural supplement. It contains 11 clinically proven botanicals that will help recharge and protect your liver. The company's already helped more than 2 million fellow Americans with their products, and they're a proud sponsor of this show for a long time, and I'm proud to continue telling you all about Liver Health Formula. Uh, you can try Liver Health Formula and get five free gifts from the company. You heard me correct. That's five gifts for free. You got to go to getliverhelp.com slash Chad. Claim your free bonus gifts with your order today. It, it's helped people in my family. It's helped me. I take it daily. Getliverhelp.com. That's getliverhelp.com slash Chad. So you're right. And I would doubt you, you got in front of me because that's exactly where I wanted to, what I wanted to ask you about. You know, my opinion on Obama changes pretty much weekly. Some days, I think he's a puppet that, you know, they created a celebrity. They made the guy rich. He never cared about being a politician. He was an activist that that they said, hey, you be this guy and we'll make you, you know, ungodly rich. And that's exactly what they did. And now he's kind of on the string to do whatever the puppet masters say. And then other times I think maybe he is the mastermind behind this whole deal. Now, what we do know is that his wife abjectly, abjectly hates America. I mean, she's vocalized that numerous times. Uh, she's embarrassed by America. She's disgusted by America. And so damn flag Obama. Yeah, exactly. The damn flag. And, you know, she's ashamed to be an American and, you know, or, you know, Jeremiah, Wright, Goddamn America. Um, you know, and they sat under his tutelage for so long as the, pa as their pastor, so we know the hate for this country oozes out of the Obama clan. And, you know, Barack Obama, another gay man uh, who is also living a lie, but he wanted to bring America down because he hates the idea of American exceptionalism, right? Absolutely. He hates the idea that that America can be a, can be a you know, the, the global leader. In but he does like Martha, so, Martha's Vineyard exceptionalism. <laughs> 
Well, it's okay for them. I mean, we know that. Like you were just in Davos. I mean, it's hard to get to Davos, right? It's no. not. A, it's, it's not a hop, skip, and a jump to get to Davos for the World Economic Forum. Not at all. So everybody's got to go in on a private jet. Um, you know, you're you're taking planes, trains, and automobiles to get in there. And then how much how much is a hotel room in Davos a night? Well, um, during the World Economic Forum, they could be as much as six thousand dollars a night. And we're talking we're talking like you know. Uh, Motel Six. Yeah, that's insane. So obviously, it's for thee and not for me with their private jets, and they're going to preach to you about climate change, and they're going to bring down. You know what I've always said, Larry, is, you know how if you're a billionaire, you go out and buy yourself a private island. I think these global elitists want the private island to be the Earth. I think that, I think whether it's depopulation or whatever, they want the Earth to be their private island. Yeah. You know, they'll keep enough of us around to, to, to feed the butter. machine. But yeah, but that, but at the end of the day, it's their private island, and, and they're the ones who are running everything. In order to do that, America's got to cease to exist as we know it, right? And yep. so, you saw something. You, I don't want to steal the thunder of your story, but you you did something that made me pray for you a lot in the last thirty six hours. Uh, you jumped on an airplane. Where did you go, and what did you see? You know, it's, first of all, what kind of airplane? What kind of airplane did you get on? It is, uh, it is absolutely, uh, absolute insanity. I got on a little twin prop Navajo, and um, it's funny because you know I, I'm reminded of that scene, Chad. You know, in the old Star Wars, where they're going into these cantinas looking for a pilot to take them to Alderaan. <laughs> and that's that's kind of what I was doing as I was trying to find somebody who would take me there. And I was looking at various options of driving. And one of the funny parts of the story, to be clear as to where I was going, I wanted to go to Nico Cle, which is to the south of Cartagena. But you would talk to a dozen uh, uh, Colombians and they would tell you all kinds of things. I heard it was six hours. I heard someone else say it was eight Last person I talked to mm. said, those people told you that are insane. It's at least 12 hours, and there's militia all over the roads and bandits. Someone else said to me, ah, you can drive there. It should be fine. A doctors Without Borders, uh, a person I was talking to, is saying, oh, well, I haven't been on the roads, but I, I think it'll be okay. You know, so you were getting all kinds of information. And, you you know, I, I, I can't seem to be able to search that distance and get real intel on the roads. So my attention turned to flying um, there, and I eventually found a pilot who'd take me there. Now, Nicocli is the jumping off point for the Darien Gap. It's where all these migrants who are coming all across this continent, and, and I'll, I'll call them migrants, I'll also call them illegal aliens because they're illegals in every country they pass through other than their country of origin. And, and I want to yeah. see this on the front end. Most of these people, Chad, I found myself giving them money. They, most of these people mm -hmm. you feel for. Um, my anger is not towards them. These are desperate, desperate people. It is the, I want to drop an F-bomb here. It is the Biden administration that has created this human crisis. I compare it to a, a Black Friday sale. It's like it's like they've declared America as a great Black, Black Friday sale. And these people, everyone in South America knows that the U.S. border is open. They know it. Mm. And some of them are risking absolutely everything to go. So they go to uh, Nico Cle, which is on the western um, border of, um, of Panama, excuse me, of uh, Colombia. And what a lot of Americans don't understand is Colombia is a massive country. It's almost twice the size of Texas. And it's the only country in South America that is on both the Atlantic and the Pacific side. So if you are going, you know, by foot to the United States, you have to go through Colombia and you have to go through the Darien Gap. And the Darien Gap is 60 miles of the most dense and dangerous jungle in the world. There's no roads that go through the Darien Gap, zero, and it's controlled by bandits. So these people are going to Nico Cle, and just to the south of it, a uh, another city called uh, um, Turbo. Both of them uh, were at one time, you know, lovely, uh, scenic, you know, beach vacation towns. But now the cartels, the Del, Del Golfo cartel, runs it. They're they're operating there. 
So when I'm talking to my Colombian friends, they're saying, Larry, you're going to go there? I wouldn't go there. This is this is too dangerous. You shouldn't go there. Well, that, this pilot was willing to go, and this is so funny, Chad. Um, mm. These guys, these are these were daring pilots because all that you have in the Coakley is an abandoned airfield. Okay, so there's there's you have a terminal there that's closed up, weeds, vines, everything. It's like Planet of the Apes. There's no human being there. Zero. So as we're about to land on this abandoned airfield, the grass is growing up all over the place. The pilot turns and he says, we can't land because there's cattle walking all over the airfield. So what he does is he starts buzzing the cattle and then pulling up, you know, before we hit the tree line. And then he would come back and, you know, do it again, trying to get the cattle off the airfield. You don't want that thing, one of, one of them coming through the fuselage, you know, so... We ultimately yeah. landed. We ta taxied to nowhere in particular. Absolutely no human being there. And then after, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes, because I was waiting for a translator to meet me there. And it was funny because he never showed up. He misunderstood that I was coming to the port, not the airport. He mm. said, I, I had no idea you were actually coming to the airport because no one flies into Nokokli. Yeah. But then these police officers show up and they start searching the planes looking at me, thinking maybe we're drug traffickers or that I'm possibly DEA or CIA, but they eventually leave me alone. We get into a tuk-tuk, if you know what I'm talking about, those those um, those those motorized trikes, you know, where you sit mm -hmm. in the back. They're, they're kind of a motorized rickshaw. And take one of those into uh, to town, and I just hire that guy for the day. I'll say, look, I'll give you, you know, 20 bucks for, you know, for the afternoon to to take me around to Coakley. And what you find there, Chad, is, you know, as I'm about to say on a thread that I'll drop later today, it reminds me of the Murray Head song, One Night in Bangkok, <laughs> you know, yeah. you know where, where, um, you know, uh, the tough men crumble and um, where there's a, a temple in every pearl, but, uh, excuse me, a pearl in every temple, but the pearls ain't free. Uh, sex is for sale there. Drugs are for sale children are for sale. Every kind of human degradation is going on in the Coakley. And the Biden administration is responsible for it all. These are all desperate people who believe in the American dream. And I'm not talking about the criminal element. Uh, you know, nobody wants them. I don't want them. The Colombians don't want them. The Panamanians don't want them. I'm just talking about the people that I would see in the streets there. Pregnant women, Chad, who are getting on these these, um, I call them ferries is a little bit too grand because you may picture, you know, a big ship that uploads cars and this kind of thing. We're talking about, you know, maybe a 30 foot boat, maybe 40 feet mm -hmm. that will load, say 20 people on it. They give them life jackets. Those people pay $150 a head to go across, um, the Gulf there to, um, uh, where you begin the hike through, the Darien Gap. Now, if you have real money, let me, let me interrupt you. Let me interrupt. All right, hey Larry, let me interrupt you. That you said so. It's one hundred and fifty dollars a head to go across, right? Yep. Okay, so so how does that translate in terms of the exchange rate in in all of that? Is that is that I mean, would that be dollar for dollar in terms of what their currency is, or is um, that would that be no, no, that exorbitant? Would, I'm going off the top of my head here, but I would say that's probably half a million Colombian pesos. Okay. So that's right at about a half a million Colombian pesos, which, you know, they, these are people, we're talking about the average laborer in Colombia, and the economy in Colombia is way better than in Venezuela or Haiti or Cuba, where most of these refugees are coming from. The average yeah. laborer, for instance, in this hotel, the, the people who are serving coffee and meet you at the desk are making about $20 a day. That's what they get paid, yeah. about 20 bucks a day. So... Uh, for a Venezuelan, they're not even making 10 bucks a day. And we're talking about people who have, you know, in the last couple of years, the average Venezuelan has lost about 40 pounds. These are not big people to begin with. So it's right. utter, utter desperation. And why has it happened? Well, according to CNN, this human crisis is caused by, by climate change. That's complete bullshit, Chad. Uh, excuse me. Right. Believe me out. But it's, it's, uh, no, it's you can say nonsense. it on my show. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it's angering because this is yeah. caused by Marxism that is destroying, annihilating these economies. 
And so here you are, you're looking at people, Chad, who they've never been anywhere. They've never been out of their own country, okay? And I watched two girls yesterday, two sweet, cute, you know, teenagers who are talking to me about, and they were boarding these these um, these boats like they were getting on a Disney ride. And I thought, these girls, they've never been out of the country. They have no idea what is waiting for them on the other side, which is human trafficking, uh, rape, murder, extortion. Everything is waiting for them over there. But they were giddy. They were excited. And, and I found myself wanting to say, don't do this. But Right. That such is the desperation, and they believe in the American dream, and they believe that the door is wide open for them. The Biden administration cares nothing about these people, mm. zero about these people. Now, their answer to that would be to say, well, that's why we're flying them into the country now, is because we do care about them. But they don't. They're just using them to change America culturally, politically, socially, forever. Hey guys, you know, for 10 years, Patriot Mobile has been America's only Christian conservative wireless provider. And when I say the only one, trust me, they are the only one. And uh, Patriot Mobile has been a great supporter of this show, and I'm proud to continue partnering with them. You know, Patriot Mobile offers uh, dependable nationwide coverage, and they give you access to all three major networks, which means you're going to get the same dependable coverage that you're accustomed to without funding leftist causes. See, when you switch to Patriot Mobile, you're sending a message. You're saying that you support free speech, religious liberty, uh, the sanctity of life, the Second Amendment, our first responder, and our military heroes. And they have a 100% U.S.-based customer service team, which is going to make switching so easy. You can keep your number, keep your phone. Call them up. They'll help you upgrade with a brand new phone. Whatever you need, their team will help you find the best plan for your needs. You go to patriotmobile.com slash Chad. Uh, you call them on the phone if you want to, 972-PATRIOT. Talk to them. And you get free activation when you use promo code CHAD. I spell it Chad. That's right. Join me. Make the switch today. Go to patriotmobile.com slash Chad. That's patriotmobile.com slash Chad. Use promo code Chad. Call them up. 972 Patriot. You know, as you as you say that, I, I'm reminded of Proverbs 6, right? Um, we'll redeem this episode after your bullshit slip. Um, <laughs> I'll uh, I'll bring some scripture into this thing. Try but you know Proverbs six. Out, <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, I want to convince I you of the David, truth, my I friend. David would have used that quite a lot in the original Hebrew. I, I would say, yeah. <laughs> I would say, yeah. I would say that that's probably you know the psalmist probably wanted to go that route. Uh, people would get mad at me. Well, he actually did in the original. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, people would be shocked if they could read that. Um, there's, you know, Proverbs six sixteen. I looked it up. It says there's six things the Lord hates: seven that are detestable to Him: haughty eyes, so proud eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that are quick to rush to evil, a false witness who pours out lies, and a person who stirs up conflict in the community. That just described the Democratic Party in America. Okay, that, that just described this this administration. You could break it down. Proud eyes. I mean, we got L LGB pride. We got BLM pride. Uh, you know, the haughty eyes, the the lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood. Everything from the trafficking to the uh, abortion industry in America. Heart that devises a wicked schemes. I mean, if that doesn't describe it, uh, feet that are quick to rush into evil. A false witness. We know they're lying to us. Three hundred twenty thousand flown into America by I've the Biden administration, and they're going to they're going to deny all of that stuff. I mean, it's the, the the Democratic Party is satanic. They're demonic, uh, and they, there's certainly there's certainly no God in them in regards to that. What you went and saw firsthand. What I'm trying to explain to people from things I've seen in various countries over the years is, yes, what we're seeing is a humanitarian crisis. These people are like, they, they, they were like, you know, let's say mice that were living in a barn and they set the barn on fire and then call that climate change or call that a natural, you know, thing that happened and all the mice were driven out. And, and this is horrible because I've heard you say it, I've said it many times, if I could snap my fingers and exchange some of these people for the Democrats these demonic Democrats that are in our country, I would do it. 
because the majority of these people, I truly believe, and correct me if you if you think differently, Larry, I fully believe that the majority of people who make their way to the southern border of the United States are good people who really are hoping for a better life for themselves and their families. Uh, yes, there's nefarious elements that are in there. There's, there's violent people, there's rapists, there's murderers, there's people intent on doing bad things when they get here because they don't believe in any form of rule of law and their worldview is just different. But I would say the majority of people coming, they just want a better life. Um, and we've promised them that, but it's empty. It's an empty promise. That's a lie. What do you, what do you think about that? Uh, I agree with that. I, I and, and here's another thing: people who are going through Darien, <laughs> I mean, think about this for a second. These are you, you will see a woman with wearing whip, uh, excuse me, flip flops, carrying a child in a bottle of water, wearing a pair of shorts and a t-shirt, entering into Darien Gap. Now they're doing mm -hmm. this without government assistance. Um, these are people who are fleeing the degradation of socialism. These are the kind of people who have the same sort of mentality. And I know there will be some people be angry for me to say this, but they're possessed of the same mentality that people who created the United States, meaning who boarded boats from the Mayflower mm -hmm. through the early 20th century to come to the United States. I bear them no ill will. What I th what I think the the issue is here is first of all the Biden administration has created the problem by inviting them, so it's like they stand on the other side. A, a, a uh, an example I use in this thread that I'll drop later is it, it reminds me, Chad, of like the annual migrations of the wildebeest, <laughs> you know, from the northern Sereg Serengeti to the southern Serengeti, and the alligators all wait in the rivers, knowing that snack time is coming. And it's like the Biden administration is on one side of the river saying, come on, come on, mm. knowing that a lot of these people are going to be trafficked, murdered, raped, children disappear, all this kind of stuff. I mean, to, to, to say that's evil is, is an understatement. The Biden administration is participating, is an active, uh, not, not merely a participant, but organizer of mass human trafficking. I think these people, for the most part, who are coming, and I'm not talking about the ones who are sent by their government, like, say, Russians or Chinese or North Koreans or this kind of thing, um, or the, the, the criminal element. I think these are generally people who are fairly conservative. They're family-oriented. Um, they come from a semi-Catholic you know, worldview and background, and they genuinely want to work. Um, mm. You know, um, I, I don't have a problem with that, but there has to be, our border has to be closed. It has to be enforced. Mm. Anybody entering the country has to be vetted. And, um, and we have to send the message globally that our border is not open. And by the way, I want to say this, I, I'll just offer another theory to you, Chad. Um, I think with the with the flights, what the Biden administration is trying to do, they are in an election year, and they are they want to give the impression that we're doing everything we can to stem the human tide um, at the border. So the New York Times ran a couple of pieces. I spoke to one of the writers a couple of days ago um, about my flight into Nacogdoches, who, by the way, he was quite helpful um, to me, but. Um, we were discussing this because they had published a piece, the New York Times, that that the Biden administration was trying to close Daring Gap. They were trying to prevent the human tragedy that is going on there. And I just floated the idea to him, and I said, do you really believe that they're trying to do that? Or do they want to give that impression because they're in an election year, and then they could turn around and say, see, the numbers have dropped of the people coming through the border while they're secretly flying them into the United States. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. they want to that, say that's in that. Yeah. Go ahead. I, I was just going to say that there is, there's an article out there that, well, the daily mail article actually mentions that as a theory that says um, that they can say there's reduced border crossings in, in encounters at the border. And they can, they can justify that because they're actually flying them in. Yes. That, that to me is, uh, is, is what they're doing. And I was in a, uh, and a, you you were kind enough to post this thread for me, which, by the way, I always appreciate the fact that you do that and sling my stuff I'm out. I'm always happy there. to do it. 
And I was uh, happy to do it. And I encourage I encourage people on that topic to follow at Larry Taunton on X. Uh, you can follow him on Instagram too. He don't check it, but yeah, get on there. <laughs> I got into a fight with somebody. I well, I got into I I had to correct somebody the other day who was you know calling you out um, as as a celebrity who's using their platform. You need to get out there and do something. It just was kind of a smart ass thing, and I was like. I think he's pretty effectively effing doing it. I mean, you know, look at where you are and look at what's going on. And so, anyway, I had to correct somebody on there. And I was like, I wish Larry could see this, but he doesn't even get on Instagram. I, you know, I, um, I don't. And uh, the uh, the team is kind enough to post stuff there for me and, <laughs> and do that for me. But, you know, I usually I try to post some pictures of myself because in these places, because there are always that person who says, you know, that somehow I'm just using, like, you know, like, stock footage, you know, or something like, like that. And I'm really just <laughs> sitting in, in my living room in my slippers, you know, and, and pretending that I'm in these places. I, not at all. Mm-hmm. I'm actually, I'm actually here in these places. But, you know, a couple of days ago, Chad, um, you'll recall, I think it was maybe three days ago, I was in one of the NGOs and, uh, and I went in and, you know, I have to say this, Chad, you know, something that, <laughs> that has been very useful to me if the only thing that any benefit I ever gained for ever doing work for CNN uh, and for um, you know doing interviews with BBC and Al Jazeera and this kind of thing is that when I say that I'm I'm a writer, they Google me and boom, they immediately they may not speak English, but they immediately pull me up and they'll see me on CNN or something like that, and so they know CNN. They they may not know anything else, but they've heard of it. And uh, so that begins to open doors and you begin to have some, uh, some conversation there. And um, anyway, I just tell them, you know, hey, I'm a freelancer. I'm here investigating this. This NGO was a little nervous to begin with. But for reasons that are unknown to me, they suddenly just began to spill the beans about absolutely everything. And they began telling us, you know, that the Biden administration was... Um, flying these people into the United States and also catch this, that they're using, they believe, now this was, this was somebody who was sharing their theory at this NGO. They said that we believe that the Biden administration is secretly using, or, or secretly is not the right word, anonymously using Facebook to organize these groups to come to the United States. So they sent me, you know, they, 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 they emailed to me um, links to these Facebook groups that are all about how to get through Darien Gap, how to get um, financial assistance in the United States, how to travel in the United States, how to cross the border. I mean, everything down to, hey, this is the kind of clothes you wear to go through Darien Gap. Oh, bring some mosquito spray, you know, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But also how to get money and how to get on a flight. So this person was saying to me, some of the information in these groups is too detailed for someone who isn't an insider. And so we think yeah. Biden administration surrogates are running these Facebook groups. So, and, and TikTok, they're using TikTok as well. I have TikTok, but I've never been on there either. So, um, you know, this, this is the kind of stuff that's happening, Chad. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. Yeah. I, um, you sent me. Well, I, I think that, you know, somebody might have the question and say, how do you know it's the Biden administration? What makes them think it's the Biden administration doing that and not the cartels? Well, I or think is it both and I think, yeah, I think it's both. And I also think they're just individuals who are trying to help other people. But another thing that you mm. find on there that's kind of interesting is you also discover that there are people in the United States who are advertising on it. And uh, one of the advertisements I posted in a thread is of a restaurateur in New Jersey saying he's looking for young women with a good presence. He'll provide housing. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's trafficking within trafficking. I'm almost positive. Sure. So again, yeah, you sent me that clip and I was, I mean, it was cringeworthy when I saw (laughs) that, that job posting, if you will. And it was underneath the, the post that you're talking about of how people are getting to America. Well, I mean, let's think of it like this. You, let's just say that the two of us are family men in uh, in Venezuela. Uh, Maduro has cratered the economy. Over the course of the last 10 years, we've seen not just the national economy, but our own personal economies continue to drop. So a decade ago, 
Um, our wives didn't have to work and we were able to put food on the table and we weren't rich, but we could, we could, um, support our families. But as time mm -hmm. went on, our wives soon had to start working. Then we had to put the kids to work just to try to put enough food on the table. And then we get to a place where uh, we and our, our wives are now skipping meals just to feed the children. That's when a lot of these people said, we got to get out of this country. So they started first coming to Colombia, coming through what are called the troches. I've interviewed a lot of these people. Those are the illegal pathways because Maduro had the border closed. So they're coming to Colombia, and Colombia has been a country until recently that was kind of a success story, Chad. I mean, back in the 1990s, the drug cartels, Pablo Escobar types, owned this country, owned it, every politician. But since then, a, a city like Medellin, which was in the mid-90s the most dangerous city in the world, had the highest murder rate in the world, has become a beautiful city, a safe city, mm. reasonably safe city, a place where you could go and enjoy. But now, just last year, a literal terrorist was elected, a Marxist, who took control of the country. He's tight with Maduro over in, uh, in Venezuela. They decided to open the border. So uh, part of the reason I wanted to come here is to see what is changing here in Colombia now that the Marxists are in charge. So the Venezuela, so back to my analogy, the two of us, we've come to Colombia looking for employment, hope to bring our families over here and make it. But now we see that the Marxists are in charge and we know where this, this is headed. We've seen this movie before. So now we're risking everything to go to the United States. I don't fault people like that. I get it. I understand their desperation. We would try to do exactly the same thing. The fault is sure. with the Biden administration in inviting them and in not addressing um, the Marxism that is good in these countries. They helped topple this regime here. They helped. The CIA, we know, was involved in Colombia and also involved in Venezuela. And that's not to say anything about the Chinese, who, by the way, are all over this continent in Central America. Yeah. Well, they do like that oil, among other things. Um, the um, You and I have had dinner before, and you've, you've talked to me about people that you've interviewed and, and talked to in those countries who are trying to go from one hell hole to another. Uh, and for them, that's an escape. You know, they're trying to get out of Venezuela into Colombia. And, and I remember you telling me one time, I was like, good God, if you think escaping to Colombia, I mean, that's, that's crazy. But yeah. if you say words like Marxism and socialism to these people, they know what that means. Yeah. Most of, you know, like you said, yeah, I mean, but I mean, they, they, they at least understand the concept, like you said a minute ago, They've seen that story before. Yep. They, they come in and they go, oh, this is headed the same direction of the place where we just left. What I fear, what we all should fear, is the direction that this country is heading. I mean, this country, I don't know what it would take to get this country back after, after the Obama and now the Biden regimes here. But another four years, or if it's Biden— or another eight years, if it were, you know, Michelle Obama says she's not running. But again, I think if they tell her to, she right. will. She's she right. has no choice. And so, you know, so they came out with a, yeah, they just came out with an article this week. She said, I'm not running. And I'm like, that's BS. She has no choice in the, say, in the matter. She has no say. They made her, and if they want her to, and again, listen, Joe Biden spent 45% of his presidency on vacation anyway. She could do the exact same thing. At this stage of the game, when it comes to the Democratic Party, that's why they hate Trump, because Trump was actually actively involved in what was going on. They didn't like the way he was doing things, and they didn't like the fact that he was hands-on with so many things. They want a president in there who's going to be absentee. So they're okay with that. And I think it's Michelle, because I think Gavin would, Newsom would try to come in and be a little more hands-on too, but he's a full-blown communist. Uh, his time is coming. But America, my point, it can't survive another four to eight years of this type Absolutely of progressive not. regime. It can't because that's where we're heading. And so you have these people who have, who have, who have made their way to the United States. They're here. They've, res they've, they've exhausted all of their resources and means to get here. They can't go back home. And I'm wondering if they come here and they go, oh, hell, we've seen this story before. It's a matter of time before that's what's going to happen. I mean, if you look at how fast Argentina, Venezuela, I mean, they're downward spiral. It happened fast. 
And if people don't think it can happen here in America, I, listen, we already don't have a say in what's going on. We already have ter multiple tyrannical boots on our neck. Um, we, it, it, but argue, arguably, we're already a third world country in terms of how the thing's being run. So the desperate thing is going to happen whenever, you know, the time comes and these people who have come here and, and there's no more federal resources for them or there's no more handouts for them. There's no more migrant shelters. And, and it's going to happen in the hood first. It's going to happen in the urban communities first because that's – people could – they could, you know, balk all they want at this replacement theory. The Democrats have never cared about the blacks in America. They don't care. Listen, I don't care if it's Andrew Jackson, who was a Democrat, who went out and killed all the Native Americans, the Indians, all the way up to, you know, the, the slavery – uh, the KKK, Jim Crow laws, all of that is Democrat, all the way to the civil rights deal and LBJ, who says we're going to keep these N words, you know, voting for us for the next hundred years. So they don't care about blacks, and they know. And I saw a video this morning. Dom Luker on X had posted it of a guy, as a black guy, who's walking through the hood, and he points at an intersection. He's he, all four corners. He said, huh. he said. He said, look at all these, and there were all Hispanic men on every corner. He said, these are the new N-words. He said, these are the new N-words. He said, they're sitting out here on the corner watching the street. They got nothing on their mind. They're just waiting for orders. And so I think a lot of people in the black community are starting to wake up and go, hey, we're the ones who are going to suffer first as American citizens. We're going to suffer first because of this because they never cared about us. They don't care about us now. And these folks are here in the country, and they're going to become the new. Um, they're going to be become the new voters. They will because again, you put them on a welfare system, you put them on a you know the the government tit, and they're never going to come off of it. And now they've they've doubled up on that thing. What do you think about that theory? Well, let's let's start with Michelle. Uh, Michelle's lying, uh, in my opinion. I I could uh, could be proved wrong. Um, but I think she's lying. I think she's running. Um, I think her husband wants her to run. This is what she's saying right now, what she's being told to say right now in order to keep media uh, a scrutiny to a minimum. Uh, they don't want to start now her campaign because they don't have to. I mean, they're kind of starting it with, you know, speaker uh, engagements and, you know, book promotions and movies and, you know, this kind of thing. But uh, they're keeping yeah. her name out there. But you know, anybody from my state um, will know that George Wallace, the infamous governor of um, my state during the whole civil rights movement, uh, he was a Democrat. He was definitely on the left. It's interesting because uh, a man by the name of um, Albert Brewer, also a former governor, state of Alabama, who knew Wallace quite well, uh, I recall him saying that um, Wallace was a progressive. He said he was 100% a, a progressive. He, he, he took a certain position publicly, but he was, he was a, a progressive. And when the state constitution said he could no longer run for governor because he had already served two or three terms, he ran his wife. And, um, and he governed through her, Lurleen Wallace. And that's where we're headed. We're going to see a Lurleen Wallace kind of presidency mm. if we aren't careful. It will still be Obama. Obama is in his third term right now. He would be in his fourth uh, and potentially fifth term if, it, if, uh, if they run Michelle Obama, which I think they will absolutely do. Um, I, I have um, a black friends who are conservatives who their take on what is happening in the black community, uh, I I find very interesting. They're of the opinion that uh, many black people, and, and I don't profess to really know, but but many ba black people are being kept on the plantation, so to speak, by the by the promise of reparations. Um, yeah. That on the one hand, there is anti-immigration as any Republican because many black communities are really suffering from the influx of um, uh, these illegals into inner cities. And they're competing for some of the same money, some of the same jobs. 
some of the same scholarships, same opportunities in many instances. But the promise of reparations is something that many of them are holding out for and want. And I find that fascinating. I, I, don't, I don't know the truth mm -hmm. of it. Um, I do believe you when you say that there are many in the black community who are being red-pilled. Uh, we're obviously seeing more and more of that um, on social media, but is it enough um, to make a real dent um, in the, uh, the election outcome? I don't know, but I'm increasingly finding yeah. quiet Trump supporters. And I say quiet because I, I think they kind of fear um, some measure of retribution um, I, I, within their own communities. Yeah. Well, see, reparations is a dangling carrot, right? Yep. The, the Democrats especially will never, it will never pay anyone, they'll never pay, pay black people enough to, to the point where they can be free. Yeah. Okay. The welfare system is a modern day slavery. And I don't care, you know, they, they, they give them, whether it's welfare, which is a form of reparations, DEI, again, in my opinion, another form of reparations. Those are, those are all dangling carrots. You know, when they say, well, we're going to give everybody, every black citizen in California, what, $400,000, something like that. They're never going to do that. They're never going to give anyone enough money that they can become independent from, from the government. They're just not going to do that. And so I hope that more eyes are going to be open to that. But to your point, no, I don't think enough have opened their eyes yet to be able to make a dent um, in this upcoming election. And, and the thing, you know, I agree with you. I think Michelle's going to run because she's virtually unbeatable. I hate saying those words out loud. Virtually unbeatable. Uh, and, that, and that just shows how stupid we are as a society here in America. We have been dumbed down so bad. This is a woman who abjectly hates America. So back in Columbia real quick, you, you're down there. You, you're seeing what you're seeing. You, you know the globalist yeah. agenda. You were just at the World Economic Forum. Uh, I encourage everybody to go back and listen a few weeks back to Larry's show, Ideas Have Consequences. Listen to episode 81. I went and re-listened to it the day before yesterday what, because what you do— you, <laughs> you talk about the border. You talk. I'll tell you, you talk about the border, uh, and you talk about much of what we're talking about here, but you, you specifically unpacked— who George Soros is and where he comes from, his tutelage yeah. under Karl Popper, how he perverted the teachings of Popper, uh, and has he his worldview is, I don't believe in God. Everything is meaningless. I don't like the systems that have been built, so I've got enough money. I'm going to burn it all to the ground. And that seems to be, you do an, a great job of, of breaking that down. I encourage people to go back and listen to it. Um, it sparked me to go read more on certain topics that you mentioned in there. But that's the mindset, right? That's the mindset. Everything is meaningless. We don't like what's been built. Let's burn it to the ground. Uh, the Obamas are perfectly fine with that because in their mind, goddamn America. Um, th that, is, that is what discipled their minds, you know, the voice and tutelage of Jeremiah Wright, those type of ideologies. Uh, the... Uh, the Saul Alinsky's, you know, weather underground, they burn it all to the ground. That's their mindset. That's a joker. That's right. You mentioned that. Yeah. In the it's deal. I mean, you the created. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, and, and that's Heath Ledger's joker. And you alluded to that in that episode talking about that's the whole deal. It's just, um, just, just create enough chaos and anarchy that the whole thing burns to the ground. You know, but, but, in, go ahead. No, Go I'm ahead. Gonna, I'm, just, I'm, gonna, just, I'm changing the topic a little bit. I want to hear what you got to say. Um, to to your point, you are you are so right because again, um, I here I am in Nico Klee, um looking at these immigrants. And by the way, it's not just there. I've seen it all over the South America and Central America. But this this place is one of the worst and most dangerous places. Uh, where migrants are gathering. And we're talking about people who, because they don't have enough money, Chad, they don't have that $150 to get across. They're, they're living in conditions that make anyone in the United States look rich. We're talking like a plastic bag on some sticks on the beach. 
you know, um, as a roof and, and laying underneath it in the sand on, you know, garbage, uh, essentially, because they're hoping to either beg, borrow, work, or steal that, that money for passage, you know? So I'm, I'm there on the beach. I set up my camera that, you know, that our fine producer JD has given to me to, to, um, to film something there. And a woman is walking within my view, you know, giving me bedroom eyes. Now it's because I'm just such a stunningly handsome character. She's <laughs> hoping she knows I'm a gringo and she figures, you know, if she's able to bed me, that maybe is enough money to get her and maybe a child or her husband or someone else across that that's what's going on. And this is all the way Democrats think. So as I'm seeing this, I'm feeling, and you know this feeling because you've seen these things yourself, I'm feeling a, a physical sickness that everything I'm seeing here is being caught. Yes, the cartels are there. Yes, there's petty criminals. Yes, the, the, uh, the Colombian government is playing a role and as well as others. But the Biden administration is the is the with with Obama in the background the Biden administration is the the orchestrator of all of this evil it's like Heath Ledger's Joker is in charge mm. in creating chaos creating anarchy cre taking everything that is good and perverting it and causing as much human misery as possible you said just a little bit ago that the the Democrat party is demonic the devil lives in these places. Mm. And, and, and so what you're saying is that the, that the reach of this mindset, this worldview, this regime, if you will, is, is global. I mean, there, this, this is, we have exported this to other countries, and now those other countries are going to bring it back home to us. Yes. And that's where it's going to come home to roost. And we're going to see the exponential consequences of the philosophy that we exported. Yeah, well, you know, as I say in the book, you were kind enough to mention around the world in more than 80 days, increasingly when you travel around the world. And this is a big difference from, say, when I first started traveling abroad as an undergraduate, you know, 30 years ago. But these days, what you see is America's influence is Jekyll and Hyde. And you run into in Africa, for instance, and in South America in particular, you run into an Obama and Clinton's kind of America where they're pushing, let's say, for instance, a kind of global version of Planned Parenthood, the alphabet mafia agenda, all that kind of stuff, exporting evil, where I'm ashamed to be American when I see this, where I see what's going on here in South America with the human degradation that my country is deliberately causing, deliberately causing it. And then you see good, the, good Dr. Jekyll. And uh, that's in the form of the Marshall Plan that rebuilt Europe, that rebuilt Japan, um, or you see, um, you know, in Nigeria, Christians who are being persecuted by Muslims who love Trump, by the way. And they said, why? Because he was your only president, Democrat or Republican, who called Islam what it really is, who said, we're not letting these people into the country, and who sent them, I think, F-16s to fight Boko Haram. They loved him for that. Mm. That's, that's good Dr. Jekyll. That's the America I know, that I love, that I'm proud of. And that's the, the country I'm fighting for. What's the hope, Larry? What's the hope? Is there hope? What does that look like? I believe there is. And um, I, I know you do too, because I believe in a great God. I believe in a God who, who changed the world with 12. He changed a whole rotten empire with 12. I believe we need our 12. I think we, we need uh, a people who are absolutely dedicated to fighting this fight, um, I think we, um, we have to end ballot harvesting. We have to close our borders. And I'm going to say something here that's maybe a little controversial. We are faced with the reality of these people, for now, coming into the country, flooding into the country of the southern border and being flown in. I'll repeat what I said and what, what you said. We both agreed they're, 
their natural ideological place is not with the Democratic Party. It is not with it. Mm -hmm. They are not naturally, most of them, uh, some of the Venezuelans are, which is chiefly why they want Venezuelans, because all they know really is, is socialism. But um, these are people who don't naturally reside with the Demo Democratic Party. Republicans have to change their rhetoric and they have to change their strategy with these people. We need churches to be engaging in this, not woke churches, but real ones that actually believe in Jesus and who believe in his word. Yeah. I think we have a situation of the tail wagging the dog. I think most Americans want to do something, but they don't know what to do. And I think we got to give them the marching orders. And so a guy like you doing what you're doing, keep doing it. Me, I see myself as going to these places in an effort to equip guys like you, other guys, uh, provide for you know content on my own show to, to uh, mentally uh, fortify people to fight this battle over the backyard fence and at the water cooler and at the lunchroom table. That's what we have to have. The I'm, I'm tired of hearing these mealy-mouthed, um, you know, patriots and Christians who say, well, it's all over. Well, you don't believe in the same God that I believe in um, because I, I don't believe I'm just put here on planet Earth to, uh, to, sh to polish the decks on a sinking ship. I play to win. Yeah, yeah. Well, folks, listen, you know... Um you're not going to get the answers from one single podcast. And Larry, thank you, man. I, you're like Indiana Jones, dude. Um, you're my friend, and I, I so appreciate your mind and your study. And that's why I encourage people to read what you have written, put, in, put into volumes, but, uh, you know, subscribe to Ideas Have Consequences, follow you on Twitter, continue to, to just you know, um, ruminate on the stuff that you're putting out there, the content, because it's so mind developing in a positive way. And it's, it's just chock full of critical thought. And I appreciate that voice that you, that you have and that you utilize. I, um, you know, you and I partner with the same people in our, you know, uh, respective podcasts. You've got, you've got some courses that are coming out through Tome, um, and, uh, that, you know, you're talking, it, folks can sign up for and do that. Is, is that it? Uh, tome.com? Tome app. T O M E. Dot com. I believe tome, it's Tome. T O M E. Dot com. You're right. It's Tome app. Dot com. And, uh, of course, folks can find you, Larry Alex Taunton. Dot com. And, I, I just, you know, the threads you're putting out there are solid. I mean, they're so good. They're, they're thought provoking. But they're but they're mind developing, and I and I appreciate that. And um, I just want to encourage everybody to to follow you, support you, you know, get behind what you're doing with your fixed point organization, and that's fixed F I X E D fixed Correct. point organization. Maybe we can put a lower third down here and um, put the put the web address on there. But um, where are you headed next? You said you're going to Panama. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, honestly, I, I, I've got a couple more interviews today. My my wife keeps saying I need to try to actually pick up the book <laughs> that I brought on mm. this trip and relax and do a little reading. I, uh, I I find myself so amped up, you know, over this issue that I just kind of don't stop working. But I'm going to try to go from here to the pool for a little bit and, uh, and enjoy that. Been good. I go to Panama City. I'm hoping to go to the Darien Gap on the Panama side now. But that's, the you know, figuring out how to get there is, uh, is pretty pretty tough. My my pilot on this plane says he thinks he can get me there, and he's looking for an airfield. He's not sure where we can land, but he at least is uh, is, is looking into that. So we'll see. But we're going to try to check out the, uh, the immigration issue there. And then we go on to Mexico City, because a lot of these people are passing through Mexico City as well. Some of them are further towards the uh towards the east coast chad i i want to pay you a compliment here though maybe initially it won't sound that way i posted on twitter somebody asked me about are these things dangerous and i said yeah yeah some of it is i i never want to give the impression i try to stay in nice places that have security and take seriously the you know what i can eat and where my laptop won't disappear you know when i'm when i'm gone 
Yeah. So not everything in, in, in Cartagena, as you can see, is beautiful. We know a lot of lovely people here and lovely restaurants. However, uh, there's another aspect to the work that's not glamorous and and is quite dangerous. And I had said to someone on on uh, on Twitter that I I never take people that I actually care about on these trips um, because yeah. you know Lori she had, Lori Lori's courageous enough to go with me on these. She would willingly go with me. I don't think I could function if she were along uh, because I would be constantly worried about that. But you're one of the few people I would take along with me. And when I say that it doesn't sound like a compliment, <laughs> going back to what I just said, it makes it sound like, well, you know, I don't care about Chad. He's like one of those, those guys dressed in red in the old Star Trek. You know, he just he's just gonna disappear and it won't matter to me. But uh, but you're Expendable. a guy that I'm pretty sure I could could trust to have in my foxhole in one of these things and who would know how to handle himself. Um because you take the wrong people to some of these things and it can get sideways in a hurry. And it's, it's interesting to yeah. me because, you know, uh, my translator who was with me in the Coakley um, yesterday, he's a great guy. He was quite anxious. The pilots were anxious, but not to the point of, you know, just hysteria. They're just, you know, there's a little anxiety, not, not an overpowering fear, but I have been in some of these situations with people who they can't function. And the result is you can't function. So you have to be really careful yeah. who you take along with you. But but you're one that would perform very well, that I know. And your audience should know that too. Well, I appreciate you saying that. I've been a lot of places, man. And, and uh, you and I have spent a lot of time together. And, and at some point in time, we're going to go together. Uh, it's just it's going to happen. So um, I'll be looking forward to that uh, with anticipation and trepidation. <laughs> I, because I listen, my thing is not that you landed on the airfield with cows and y'all buzzed them to move out of the way. Is what happens when you're landing and you're sitting there for a few hours and the cows come back on the airfield? And they did. You can't buzz them from the ground. <laughs> it's funny because when the police first showed up, I stayed away from the police. You know, I, I kept yeah. my distance while my translator was talking to them because I wanted them to see me videoing them. Because I, I wanted them to to think, you know, if they were if they had some kind of nefarious motive, I wanted them to worry: is he FaceTiming, or is yeah. what he's filming being uploaded in a cloud? Because if we were going to shoot him in the head, there's the possibility that taking his phone isn't going to be sufficient. So I wanted them to them right. to see me doing that. But then I turned around, and here comes this cow. <laughs> And we're on the airfield. <laughs> we're standing on the airfield. And there's cow chips, by the way, all over the airfield. So it was hilarious. Yeah. Uh, you're a mess, dude. You're a mess. I pray for you every day. Um, and I, I do appreciate you. I, you, you. You never cease to amaze me. I appreciate you, bro. Uh, I'm going to let you get to it. Go to the pool. Read your book. Okay. Uh, tell, Lori, tell Lori I said hello. And I'm glad she's there with you, man. Larry Alex Taunton. His show is called Ideas Have Consequences. Uh, if you Google the guy, you're going to be chock full of information out there. I mean, get his books, read them. Uh, discover our enemies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Brother, thank you. Be safe and uh, shoot me a text message. We'll keep on talking. Thanks, Thank buddy. All right. Okay, guys, listen, I want to encourage you. Drop me a line, chad at thechadprathershow.com. You can also visit watchchad.com. That is where all the fun stuff is. Catch me out on the road. We're, uh, we'll be doing a whole lot more fun things. Uh, than some of these conversations entail. So come check us out. Don't forget to check out our sponsors. We sure appreciate them and love them so much. Um, I want you guys to uh, take care of yourselves, okay? Leave us a five-star rating and a review. We always appreciate it. I love you. God bless you. We'll talk to you next time. Bye.